Good morning, I'm Ellen Adams. Our scripture reading today is Romans 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. Good morning. My name is Sean Devilites. I'm one of the pastors here at Braddock Street United Methodist Church. And if you're new with us, uh, we're in the midst of a capital campaign right now. And therefore, we've been looking at some of the things that have allowed our collective faiths to be sustained this far, and the things that helped continue our faith into the future. So we've heard about gratitude and prayer, and today we hear about what it means to be a living sacrifice. Let us pray. God, indeed, we come to this place seeking to be with you and seeking other seas, other perspectives, things that we don't necessarily have by ourselves. We know that you will reveal to us. So we ask that you bless this time. Bless this time that we might learn more about you, more about ourselves, and more about each other. We love you. Amen. So I'd like us to close our eyes for a moment. As you close your eyes, uh, I want you to picture someone in your mind who has made a sacrifice for you. It could be a spouse or partner, some other family member or a friend or a neighbor. And I want you to hold their image in your mind's eye for the next few minutes. You can open your eyes if you'd like. And as we hold that image in our mind's eye, I'm going to share about the person that comes to mind first for me when I think about that sacrifice, and that is my wife, Katie. Uh, Katie and I have been together for over five years, and this week we celebrated being married for three. God bless her. And what you should know based on that is that we had about two years plus of time together to talk about how I was on track to be this pastor in the United Methodist Church. And among the many wonderful features that such a role entailed was the reality that we would move periodically. See, for anyone who doesn't know, pastors in the UMC are part of what's called an itinerant system, a system that exists because of how much you all, as a congregation, are valued. And the belief that any given church does not solely rely upon one person or one pastor. Thus, we as clergy move at the discretion of the bishop, almost always in the June-July time frame, and normally in some finite geographical space. In our case, it's a good bet that it's somewhere in Virginia. So Katie had an idea of what she was signing up for, if you will. We got married on November 5th of 2016. We had our honeymoon two months later in January. And then about two weeks after we got back, a very long story short, I found out that the church that I was appointed to at the time, the church Katie had called home for five plus years, was not going to be able to keep my position past that summer. 
So I got to come home two months into our marriage and say, so remember how we talked about that moving was a thing? And by that July, uh, in the span of that time, we waited a few months to figure out where we were moving to. Uh, we found out that we were expecting with Michaela, and Katie ends up by July. We found ourselves here, and we're happy that we found ourselves here. But she realized that she'd given up her job. She'd given up being in close proximity to her friends. She'd given up her church home. And all of that was a sacrifice made for me. And see, that, that part of Katie's story that you may resonate with a part of is something that reminds me of how sacrifice is so closely entwined with relationship. Because somewhere in the midst of our relationships with one another, we find times where we're willing to do something because we have a hope that it will be good for someone or someone's else. That our sacrifice will, be made, will make for a new opportunity, a better life, or create space to do what we believe God wants us to do. And those folks that you thought of just a moment ago that are still in your mind are ones who thought about those things for you, for me, on our behalf. That is the kind of living sacrifice that the Apostle Paul is talking about in our scripture passage today. And this passage comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. If you were to open your Bible up, it's the first letter of Paul's you'll find in the Bible. However, that doesn't mean that it was the first one written. In fact, it was written about 20 years after Jesus had died, which meant that it was about two decades worth of Paul's ministry, Paul's teaching, Paul's preaching, being poured out into one letter. It's also unique because it was one of the few letters written that Paul didn't actually know the church he was writing to. And so he was trying to communicate a lot of things, a lot of what we call theology, a lot of study of God. And if you try to read through Romans, that's why it feels so dense sometimes. There's a lot packed in there. But in the midst of all that theology, Paul talks about this living sacrifice thing. And this living sacrifice thing is looked at as compared to burnt offerings that you might have heard about before. Look again at verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, your whole selves, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, this living sacrifice language sounds familiar to you at all. Know that you may have heard it as a part of our communion liturgy here at Braddock Street. You may have heard it just last week. And if you open your hymnal, to page 14, right smack down the middle of the page, you will find these very same words that I'll put up on the screen for you. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as you proclaim the mystery of faith. You do not need to sing on this particular Sunday. But this is an important understanding for our faith that we'd be willing to give of ourselves because of our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. You may be wondering, Sean, why is this living sacrifice thing so important, so embedded in our understanding of God? Good question. It's that willingness to sacrifice for someone or someone else that reflects how our lives have been changed because of our relationship with God. Let's look at verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. All this theology and study stuff gets boiled down to the idea that God has an impact on our lives. That we are not the same people that we would be without God. And therefore, we are to allow God to change us, to influence us, to move us in ways that the rest of the world doesn't. So, quick review. Paul talks in Romans about being a living sacrifice. We take up ourselves that responsibility each month. 
when we celebrate communion because we remind ourselves of what Christ has already done for us. We claim it as our responsibility, each and every one of us, to be this holy and living sacrifice because God gave us the opportunity to do so in the first place. And it's worth noting, we're not talking about being a burnt offering. God isn't asking us for burnout in our sacrifice. God's asking for us to live differently, to care for others in a way that shows that we have a reason, a hope, that this world can become a better place than how we find it today. Sometimes that can be hard for us to wrap our heads around when we think about that kind of sacrifice, because when we think about sacrifice, very specific things tend to come to mind. Right now, there's a good chance that the idea of sacrifice might lead you to think about our holiday tomorrow, Veterans Day, a day in which you pay our respects for those who have served our country. That willingness to serve is a huge sacrifice by those veterans and their families, and we ought to be respectful, as we are, of their desire to serve others in that way. And that sacrifice sometimes leads us to feel that our own sacrifices, some of the things you thought about just a few minutes ago, don't measure up and aren't worth celebrating as much. And, and some of that might come, I don't know who instilled it or how it got here, from our cultural thing where we compare things a lot. We try to judge the value of something lined up against something else rather than taking the time to just connect what is shared in nature between the two things. So here today we realize that instead of comparing our sacrifices, we'll connect that thread that, that goes through them all. And because we are willing to do that, we might see how God is at work in our lives in ways that we may not have seen before. Think of others who sacrifice their lives for the common good as well. Those who work in school, those who teach or an administration, those who are part of any kind of health care, emergency services, our police, and yes, even those who run for government, as you were reminded of over the past few weeks leading up to Election Day. The list goes on of people who spend their lives serving in some kind of way, hoping to make a positive impact for others, hoping to, to see this world become the better place that God is already working on. You can think of family members and friends, literally anyone who has ever helped someone else along the way. Those things are all related by this God-given idea of living sacrifice. The kind of actions that reflect how God has transformed our lives in some way and how God is transforming the world before our very eyes. And what is beautiful about that is it reflects what God intends for us to see in community. Look at verses four through five. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. If you think back to communion, that's why we share in one loaf is a reminder that we are part of one body together through which God is at work. And as part of that body, as Paul goes on to talk about all the different kind of things, that, that the gifts that we have to offer, our sacrifices do not look the same. But we do give of ourselves in different ways. You might sum it up this way, that it's not about equal gifts, but equal sacrifice. That's why tithing is a thing in the church, because we all share the same portion in God's work. We share the same responsibility, and we all share in the same abundant love that comes from God. And so today, we reflect on all these different ways of seeing living sacrifice. As we think about all those different kinds of sacrifice that people have done for us, that image that is in your mind, given its importance, given how our lives have been changed by God, again, 
I ask that we close our eyes. And this time with our eyes closed, I want us to think about how God might be working through those folks that you're picturing. Working through those individuals who have cared for children, who have given an opportunity for you to go to work, to find a house, to be able to travel, to be able to go to school, to be able to afford going to school. The folks that have blessed us by giving of themselves so that we might have an opportunity to pursue what God has called us to do. As you think about those individuals, how might God be working through them to inspire your sacrifice today? How might their story remind us of how God can use us in so many different ways today? You can open your eyes if you'd like. But know that it is through those stories. It is through those rememberings. Through those pictures. They're reminded of how God has been at work. How God is at work now. How we can have hope that God will continue to work into the future. And that those stories, just as much as everything else that we give, everything else that we embody as we live each day as a living and holy sacrifice, what is so sacred about that is because our stories help point to an amazing story of a God who loves us. And there are so many people who could use that hope and can use knowledge of that God in our world today. Friends, that is what inspires us, what moves us, how God is able to take us and move us for generations and share our faith for the future. Will you pray with me? God, we give thanks for getting to be a part of your story. And whether we look at ourselves as a sentence or a mark of punctuation, or a chapter, a reminder that we are part of your work in this world. And we give thanks for that. And we know that we don't have the same gifts or equal gifts, but we do commit ourselves to an equal sacrifice. We know we come here with different stories and different backgrounds and different experiences, different ways that we've interacted with you that have led us to be connected here. And for that, we give thanks. We give thanks for the joys like birthdays and anniversaries. And we give thanks that we are not alone in our troubles. Like in neglect and abuse and sickness and death that we see in this world. Because in the midst of all of that, that we know that you are present. That you love us. And that we have hope in you working for our good. So it's with that hope and that truth in mind that we lift up those in our community this morning. Like Harold Ogg, Stryker Cron, Alyssa and Aaliyah Farquhar, David Powers, Truman and Clarice Dalton, Bryce Newland, Scott Hackett, the Patty Shader family, Bill Telling, Jessica Marlowe, Scott Jackson family, Strother Adams family, Ed Orndiff, Denny Bromley, Wayne Dick, George Morris, George Quarles, Robbie Robinson, Betty Edwards, Harold Madigan, Wayne Dick, Amy Dove, Rob Connor, Dick Harmison, those without homes, those without jobs, those serving away from home, victims of natural and man-made disasters. Lord, today we especially pray for those who over the past decades have enlisted in armed services, those who were drafted, for all of their collective sacrifice as we all await the fulfillment of your promise that one day there will be peace on this earth. We give thanks for our election process, that it is peaceful. And we pray for those who are beginning new jobs this week and those that are looking for new jobs this week. We give thanks for the fact that we value each vote cast because each vote cast is a voice worth hearing. God, we also pause to name others silently before you now who are on our hearts and mind as well.
God, is for all of these people, each and every one of these persons, that we give thanks to you and ask that you continue to reveal yourself to them and to us in the ways that we do not understand, but also to empower us, to equip us, to transform us, that we might help reveal your love in the ways that we do understand. It's with that that we join together in the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.